All right, good morning, happy Saturday. Welcome everyone. My name is Tyler Ballhorn and I will be your host for the next little while this morning as we go through my presentation today, the five things every stock trader must do to succeed. A little bit about my background. I started trading the stock market when I was 19, a student at the University of Calgary. That was about uh, 31 years ago now. And I started teaching people how to trade the stock market in 2000, maybe 2001, so 20, 21 years ago. I've trained uh, people all across Canada, all over the world, my methods. I've developed my own tools. I've developed my own indicators. We'll talk a little bit about that today, although I do have some webinars next week as well that will go into more detail about some of those other tools and, and, and methodologies. Today, I really wanna talk about some of the big lessons I've learned and things that I think will help everyone be a better investor, be a better trader. And in some ways, it goes beyond just the stock market. You can apply some of these lessons to real estate investing, currency trading, uh, Bitcoin, uh, futures, gold, all that kind of stuff. All right, so what are we gonna talk about today? Here's the itinerary. I've got the five things every stock trader must do to succeed. They are say no to FOMO, seek surprises, chill, when the going gets tough, get lazy, diversifying is average. Now, those five things probably don't seem to make a lot of sense just yet, but I will explain and they will make good sense as we go through them. I'll also talk about those webinars that are coming up next week for those that want to go a little more in depth into my strategies, into my tools and processes. I'll encourage you to register for those. They are also free. It's one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, and one next Saturday at the same time. I will talk a little bit about the trader training I do. I'm not going to talk about it too much. And then I will take some of your stock questions. If you have stock questions, hold off answer asking them now because uh oh sorry it's not showing my slide here um there we go there you can see the itinerary thank you um yeah just hold off a asking uh questions about stocks because the way this system works your questions sort of scroll up and i won't see them later on so just hang off on those for now all right so let's get into Number one, say no to FOMO. So FOMO, of course, stands for the fear of missing out. And it is one of the most destructive forces that traders and investors must overcome. We human beings have a tendency to believe things when there's proof. And so the more a stock goes up, the more we will believe that it will continue to go up. If someone tells us about an opportunity in ABC mining company and the stock isn't going anywhere, we are going to quickly dismiss that as nothing more than a bad rumor. But if the stock is going higher, well, now it lends legitimacy to what we've been told. And the more it goes up, the more we feel like we are missing out on an opportunity. And the result then is our emotions cause us to chase strong stocks and ultimately pay too much for them. And we must avoid buying parabolic trends. So if you heard me on the radio today, you'll know that I was talking about parabolic trends. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. We absolutely have to make sure that we are not buying into a parabolic trend because parabolic trends usually result in a sharp pullback. And that can not only give us financial hardship, but also emotional hardship. Nobody likes to ride out a losing stock trade or investment. So this FOMO, it causes us to also buy marginal stocks, things that, you know, someone gives us a tip and we hear a great story. Perhaps it's someone at work who says, oh, this company, uh, I got some inside information and you got to buy it now. Not recognizing that that person probably already owns the stock and therefore they're drinking the Kool-Aid. They have a vested interest in having other people buy it. And then we get into these marginal stocks and ultimately we've bought into a parking lot for our capital that really has little potential to be profitable. 
It's important that we as traders follow a proven set of rules for when to buy and sell. And it should be very specific. It does not have to be complicated, but we need to have a plan. We need to have a set of rules that have been tested and really focus on following the rules and keep our emotion out of it. Let's look at a couple charts. Here's where FOMO comes in. It does not come in down here when the stock is starting to move. It comes in in this range when the stock is making considerable gains day after day. And maybe you're on an internet chat room or you're checking the price quotes and you're seeing a stock that's up 8% and then the next day 12% and then the next day 14% and then the next day 4% and it just doesn't seem to stop. And that triggers our emotions, but it also means that there will be lots of chatter on the internet about that company and about how hot it is. And so we end up chasing this trend that has a parabolic shape. And let me just show you what I mean by that. So there is a linear trend line. What I've done is I've started where the trend began and I've just drawn a line across the points that it touched. And you can see that when trend runs away from the trend line, when price runs away from the trend line, it typically pulls back. And it runs away and then it pulls back. It actually still hasn't made it all the way back to the trend line. It's got to pull back a little bit more or go sideways a little bit longer before it's going to hit that trend line. Now, the danger is in buying the parabolic trend line. If this is our linear trend line, then the parabolic occurs there and there. And if we're buying up here, we're chasing the stock with the emotional people that really have no basis in a rational valuation of the company, they're buying it mostly out of the fear of missing out. We can look at this in another example. Sometimes the linear trend gets broken. So here's the linear trend. You can see the upward trend started in this range, touched it here, went parabolic, broke the parabolic trend line right there, which is the time to sell. But then also, notice it came back to the trend line, bounced off of it, I was kind of hanging in there for a couple of weeks until it finally broke the linear upward trend line and went lower. So we have two choices. If we are fortunate enough to buy the stock early in the trend, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, we have to be willing to sell it when the parabolic trend is broken or when the linear trend is broken. And really, which one you do depends on how actively you want to trade. All right, so let me make sure that sits in or sets in. Okay, moving along. The next thing that I've learned, which is highly effective, is to seek surprises. The best opportunities, the future hot stocks, the future hot markets, those are the stocks that often don't make any sense. The best opportunities are often those that don't make any sense. We need to seek surprises. When a stock has been kind of doing nothing and kind of boring, just sort of trading sideways, and then all of a sudden it comes alive, with strength, price movement to the upside on stronger than normal volume. But we need to realize that there are some investors who are buying on some new information. You may not know that new information. You may say, this makes no sense why this company is going up. You've looked through the news, you've studied the company. Why did this stock go up 12% today? But realize that some people in the market get better information than others. Large investors can drum up better information. Sometimes people that are close to the company get better information. And those people with better information are the ones who create the abnormal trading activity early in the upward trend. Now, as more and more people learn about that information, it will perpetuate the upward trend. That is why stocks go into these long-term upward trends, which is really how we make money. 
it's catching on to these hot stocks that go up week after week after week. Well, it starts with those who have the best information and it trickles down to various layers of people. And as those groups get that information as well and, and learn about that stock, it goes up. And all the while, typically, the company's prospects are also improving. So an uptrend will build as more people learn about this new information. And I created an indicator called the Stock Scores Action Candle. And it's a, a, a computer algorithm that goes through every stock that trades in North America, US and Canada. And it seeks out those stocks trading with abnormal price and abnormal volume. Now the best opportunities come, and I'm gonna show you this in a moment, the best opportunities come when these stocks break from low price volatility with abnormal activity. Let me show you. This is a stock that I bought five or six days ago. This is, would be what I call a swing trade, where I intend to hold it for something less than a couple of weeks typically. But you'll notice that there are some pink dots on this chart. There's also some white dots. Let me explain what those are. The pink dots occur when there is abnormal price and abnormal volume. So we can see here the price moved abnormally. By the way, this is a 13 minute chart. So each one of these bars represents 13 minutes. So this was April 12th, it's the day that I bought it. It made a action candle. It was trading with abnormal volume and abnormal price action. I don't know anything about this company. I bought it. I still don't have any idea what this company does. I would assume there's some kind of biotech company. I really don't care. What I know is that the people who follow this company the closest that know it the best, and it's usually larger institutional investors, were buying it aggressively here because I can see the volume and I can see the price jump. And more importantly, it came after five or six days of low price volatility. The stock was trading in a narrow range quietly, and then it came alive. Now, every day I run a service called Active Live, where we watch, or really the computer watches, the entire US stock market for stocks doing this during the day. Now, we have another tool that does it for Canadian and US stocks on the daily interval for those investors longer term. So, I buy the stock here, I actually bought it a few times. I bought some here, I bought some more there, bought some more there, I bought some more there. And so far I'm making a, eh, not a huge profit, but probably, uh, let me think about that, probably 12 to 15% in five days so far. Although with leverage, it's even better, but I didn't really leverage it, but I could have. All right, so that is what we call a swing trade. And it starts with the abnormal activity, the surprise, that comes from the low volatility. Now we can also do that on a longer term time frame. Here is CGA, which is a, another US listed stock. And here you can see boring, sideways trading, and then spike of volume, spike of price. And then again here, boring, sideways trading, and then it comes alive. Look at the volume come in. Now if I put that chart in front of you at the right moment, you'd say, yeah, I see it. The challenge is having tools to find it. I started doing this 27, 28 years ago, and I had to build my own tools because they didn't exist. And so I've built tools over many years. I built tools for a piece of software called TradeStation, which I use for day trading. And then I built the Stock Scores website to find these things. And that's what we'll talk about in the webinars next week, how we use those tools. Today, I'm just gonna give you some of these basic rules. All right, the next important thing to learn. Most stock traders have an emotional attachment to their money. Most human beings do. You know, we don't like to lose it. We like to make it. What this means is that this emotional attachment to our money causes us to enter into Trading decisions with emotion. We let our emotions have a role in our decision making. Now, emotion clouds our judgment. And certainly, you know, that FOMO, that fear of missing out is one way that it does it. 
But when we start to panic, when we start to worry about losing money, there's actually a part of our brain that turns off and another part of our brain that turns on. The part that turns on is called the amygdala. And this is, some people call it the lizard brain. It's one of the oldest parts of our brain and it represents the fight or flight response. So if you're walking through the forest and a cougar jumps out at you, you run, right? That's just nature protecting us. And that served us well when we were walking in the forest and trying to escape animals that wanted to eat us. It doesn't happen too much anymore, but we still feel this same response to things that really aren't that dangerous. You know, losing money in the market, it's not fun, but it's not gonna kill us. But yet we still feel that response. And what happens is when the amygdala kicks in, we no longer think rationally. Our, our, the front of our brain, our prefrontal cortex turns off and we go into fight or flight mode. And this is why you may have found in the past that you've made a decision in the market that when you reviewed it later, made no sense. You know, maybe you sold a stock and you can remember kind of panicking because it was pulling back a little bit. And so you sold it. And then a week later, it's 20% higher. And you go, why did I sell that? What, what was I thinking? Well, the reality is you weren't thinking. Your amygdala took over, your fight or flight response took over and you made a bad decision based on emotion based on fear or greed. So we have to avoid letting emotion cloud our judgment. And a big part of what I teach when I teach the different courses that I do is how to overcome emotion. I mean, I can write down the rules for my strategy on a napkin, not that hard. Yeah, it takes a few weeks to kind of get good at it and learn, but the challenge is to keep your emotion out of the decision-making. And I see it every day. I run this active live service every day and people pose their questions on stocks. And people who I know have reviewed the material who really understand it well, will still ask me about stocks that really don't fit the rules. And it's because they're rushing the decision. They have that worry that they're missing out. They're making that emotional decision instead of the rational one. And then in the evening, when they review the trade, they go, what was I thinking when I even asked that question? I don't mind. That's, I've been teaching people for 20 years. I see it over and over and over again. I, I, it, it's normal. In fact, if, if you aren't that way when you start trading, I'd be more worried because it may mean that you've got some mental health issues. In fact, a study was done a number of years ago where they compared two groups. One, you know, normal people and then one of schizophrenics, and they had them play stock simulations. And guess who won? Those people that suffered from schizophrenia were better traders because they didn't have the same emotional attachment to money or that fear, uh, that fight or flight response when the fear came in. So learning trading rules is easy, but overcoming emotion is the challenge for most. It takes time and help and a few tricks and it helps to have someone like me support you through that process so that you can chill. And I say it every day in my active live service. I remind people to just chill and to play the strategies as I've taught them to follow the rules and just take a breath. And it, it sounds hokey, but I literally will sometimes say, everybody just breathe. You know, if the market was dropping sharply, you know, take a breath. Five and a half seconds in five and a half seconds out, chill, turn off the amygdala and turn on the thinking brain. It's easy to say, but it's hard to do, but it's a really, really important lesson, especially for the short-term trader, the day trader, the swing trader, because that's when your emotions get most into your decision. Longer term investing, not so much because you've got more time to think about it. All right, so here is an example of chill. This is a stock that uh, many of us played in the active live service. And one of my students, a guy named Mark, who has been a student of mine for four or five years, he made six figures on this stock. I can't remember the number, I think $400,000. And this is a guy who didn't start with a lot of money. 
Started with a relatively small amount. He's been building it up over time. He had a lot of troubles when he was starting with emotional control and mastery. I helped him a lot. And he's had a year in the past year where he's made over a million dollars. But to his credit with this stock is he chilled. He traded the linear upward trend line. So he bought the stock back in here. I don't remember the exact times. And when it would pull back like this, he would chill and say, okay, it hasn't broken that upward trend line. And it pulls back here and he'd say, okay, it hasn't broken the upward trend line. And so he wrote it out. Now, I think he actually sold some up here and bought it back. I mean, he's been in and out of this stock many times. I'll try to dig up his email where he talked a little bit about how he was doing this uh, for one of the webinars this week, perhaps. But the point was he stuck with the winner. He didn't let fear and greed come into it. And the result was, I believe this was his most successful trade ever. Hundreds of thousands of dollars made by following the rules, by managing emotions, and chilling. All right, next one. When the going gets tough, the tough get lazy. Now, this only applies, I think, to the stock market. If you apply this to life, it may not serve you so well. But the stock market is bigger than all of us. We cannot overpower it. We cannot tell it what to do. It does not care about us. It doesn't seek to hurt us. It does not seek to help us. It is just a collection of people buying and selling. And there are times when the trend is up and it's easier to make money. There's times when the trend is down, when it's actually also easy to make money on the short side. And then there's times when the trend is sideways and choppy, where it's more difficult to make money. And the market constantly moves in these waves. I've been trading for 30 years. It's constant. You have an up wave, you have a down wave, you have a sideways wave. When you think things are bad, they get better. When things are great, they get worse. It's the waves in the market. And it always repeats itself. And the important thing to do is not give back the profits that you make from the good times when you go into one of the slow times. So we had a pretty good first six weeks of the year. And then we've had kind of a quiet eight weeks. And now it's earnings season, things starting to pick up a little bit. So I'm hopeful that the next wave of strength will come. But during the quiet period, I scaled back my risk dramatically, 20% of my normal risk amount. I became way more fussy because I'm playing defense. And when the market starts to move into an upward trend again, I will go into offense mode. And we can do that with sectors. You know, the overall market, for example, the S&P 500, the large cap U.S. stocks, they're doing reasonably well. The small cap U.S. stocks are not doing well. Uh, oil stocks are really strong up until about two weeks ago. They've gone quiet. But now gold stocks are starting to show life. So there's always something happening, but you have to seek it out. And if there's nothing, you should not lower your standards. You should not try too hard. You should not force trades that don't meet your rules. You simply plan your trade and you trade your plan. So here is a chart of the NASDAQ 100 going back three years. And you can see that there was a nice strong upward trend after COVID. So this is the COVID crash. And you had a great move out of COVID. And then you had a couple of months of sideways trading. It was a little harder to make money then. And then you went into another upward move. It's a pretty good market. End of last year into middle of February. And then we had, you know, six or seven weeks of quiet. And now we're starting to pick up again. What you have to do is work hard here and get lazy here. Work hard here and get lazy here. But what we tend to do is we tend to work hard when things are hard. Because that's how, you know, you know, we do better in life that way. In fitness, you work hard, you get stronger. But in the stock market, you should work hard when things are easy. Because like taking candy from a baby, 
making money in a, in a sharp upward trending market like this, easy time. That's when you work hard. And then when the trend is broken and we go sideways for a little while, okay, you still work, but you're very fussy. Scale back your risk. All right, and my last of my five things is to recognize that diversifying makes you average. Now, conventional financial wisdom says own a diversified portfolio. Have an oil stock, have a phone stock, have a bank stock, a technology stock. And really, to me, this is an excuse for not being very good at picking stocks. You're trying to buy stocks from a wide range of areas. And that way, when the good stocks go up, they'll pay for the bad stocks that are going down. And you know what? That's okay. Diversification is a proven long term way to be average. If you want to earn the average of the market, diversify. Nowadays, you don't need to buy stocks. You can just buy a low cost index exchange traded fund or a low cost index mutual fund where there's not a lot of fees charged and just earn the average. You know, buy an S&P 500 index fund that has very low management fees, own it for the rest of your life, you'll probably average 8% a year. That's what the historical average is. Nothing wrong with that if you want to be average. I don't want to be average. I want to beat the market. And in order to beat the market, you have to find alpha stocks. Now, alpha stocks are those that are trading on their own story. So the biotech company that is working on a cure for some terrible cancer, and they find a treatment that is effective, that stock is going to go up no matter what the overall stock market is doing because they have discovered something that will dramatically improve their ability to make money. So we want to trade alpha stocks or even alpha sectors, those sectors of the market that are really hot and leading the market. So my approach to risk management is not to diversify, but simply to limit the size of my losses. And risk management is absolutely essential. So when I sort of scoff at diversification, I don't want anyone to think that that means we should not manage risk. You absolutely have to manage risk. But I like to manage risk by limiting the size of my positions and limiting the potential size of my losses. If the trade doesn't work, I get out. And I know where to get out. And when we do the investment webinar on uh, Tuesday, I'll show you some of those methods. We're not going to go into the detail today, but pretty simple things that you can learn. And we'll, we'll cover that off next week. Our number one goal is capital preservation. Now I'm going to show you all of the stocks that I've done position trades on from the last, I think it's about a year, maybe a little more than a year. And what I, I mean, the returns you, you see are nice, but what I really want you to look at is the companies. Okay, so here are my position trade picks from, uh, like, it goes back there to, uh, well, there's one in January, oh, it's January this year. You know, it goes back to like April of last year. So yeah, one year. And what I want you to notice is company names. So we've got here a Canadian manufacturer of uh, leisure machines. This is Bitcoin related. I don't know what all these are. This is oil. This is cannabis. Um, this is oil. This is oil. I don't know what all these are. Uh, this is oil. This is, you know, the Reddit group. This is oil. You see, there's quite a few oil names, a few technology names, Canadian and U.S. stocks, but it is by no means diversified across a large number of industries. I just went where the action was. You know, I, I say it as a joke, but it really is. A, it's not a joke. I don't know what these companies do when I buy them. I simply buy them because their market activity meets my rules. I'm a rules trader. When a stock is boring and going sideways and it comes alive, like Riot did back in November of 2020, I buy it. I, it took me the longest time before I even know what Riot did. I know now that they're 
I think they're a Bitcoin miner or something. So they make money from Bitcoin going up. But when I bought it, I didn't know that. Stock went up 228%. It's actually up even more now. I, I wish I hadn't sold it. Sold it in January. But my point in showing you this is that I trade alpha. I look for stocks that are behaving in ways that tell me that they're trading on their own story. Now, these are longer term trades. Of course, we do day trades and swing trades as well, but that's the approach. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the upcoming webinars that are next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. If you wanna learn more about my strategies, my processes, the tools I use, a little more about the theory behind why, I, why what I do works, um, how much time does it take? Do you do this all day long? Can you do this 15 minutes a week? We've got strategies for all types of investors and traders. How much money is required to do it? All of these sorts of things. So on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time, how to invest in the stock market profitably. Webinar just like today. And then the following day, Wednesday, I'll focus on day trading, a little bit on swing trading as well. And then on Saturday next week, it says 6 p.m. Sorry, that's not correct. It should be 10 a.m. Saturday, April 24th at 10 a.m. Um, I will go through the different training programs that we have. We have a mentorship program, an active trader program, and an investor program. If you want to learn more about those courses, come to that. I, I'm not really into doing hardcore sales pitches. I'm just going to give you the information so that you can decide what's right for you, if anything. Now, I'll talk a little bit about how I teach. It's all done online, and it's complemented twice a year with some live webinars, live, uh, real, real live training that I'll be doing in May. So when you go into our Stock Scores Education Center, which is on the Stock Scores website, you go into Education Center, and here on the website, you've got all these modules that uh, start with the foundation. This is the theory, the basics that you have to understand in order to apply the strategies. So we have investor strategies for those that want to be longer term, and then we have active trader strategies and, and tool lessons for those who want to be day traders or swing traders. And there are written components. There's a video, there's an assignment, there's a test for the foundation area. So it's all online, very easy to go through. It's probably 12 to 15 hours of lessons in here. You don't have to do all of them. It depends on which strategy you're going to focus on. But it's there. And that's going to give you your, your base of knowledge. But more importantly, I'm also there to guide you through it, answer your questions by email. I don't teach a lot of people every year. Um, and so I give very personalized service. I take a lot of pride in helping people do this. I enjoy teaching. I've been teaching for 20 years. I still like it. And that's why I do it. So the investor course focuses on investor strategies. It gives you access to the market scan tool, email support from me. I'm gonna go into this in more detail on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I'll talk about the active trader material, the, the day trading stuff, how to day trade, how to swing trade. I'll talk about that kind of stuff. Really, I'll go into the courses next Saturday. When you do the active trader course, it makes you eligible for our active live service where you can watch my analysis screen all day long and I make, I have a little commentary for the first half an hour and the last half an hour, always teaching, always trying to help people make money in the market every day. As long as the market's open, I'm pretty much there unless I'm on an airplane or something. We're not, we're not on any airplanes these days. What is Stock Scores Active Live? You can uh, watch my algorithms run in real time. And it's a live webinar. It starts uh, five minutes before the market opens and it ends five minutes after the market closes. You're watching my screen, the same screen that I'm using to pick my trades through the day. You're watching the same screen. It's the same algorithm running. And I watch it. I highlight some of the picks that I, I find in the first half an hour, but you watch it all day long. That service is only available to Stock Scores Active Trader members. And there's a very practical reason for that. If too many people are using the tool, it's not going to work as well. And so I keep the numbers down by requiring that you have to complete the Active Trader course in order to be in that. Now, you could take the Active Trader course today and be in Active Live tomorrow. There's no requirement that you have to know it all. You just have to have gone through that material 
And then you can do a lot of your learning in real time, in real market conditions, by being part of Active Live. Now, before I get into, uh, I'm going to take your questions in a minute. We can look at a few stocks or markets if we have time. Um, but I wanted to share this with you. Uh, I just got this email yesterday. And this is one of the reasons I teach. And so I'll let you all read that. I don't need to read it out. But this came yesterday. I blocked out the guy's last name just to, I, I didn't ask him if I could post this. So I didn't want to put his last name up there. But Anthony wrote what to me is a very nice email. And basically, he's he turned a $50,000 account into over 225000 He says he's made some mistakes. He's learned a lot. But most importantly is this part. It has changed my life in this market, you know, in, or in this world where we've got COVID and people are maybe not able to work in the normal way. They have to work from home. Trading is a great option. And I enjoy teaching people what I do. If you have an interest in that, then those courses are something to consider. If nothing else, if you want to learn more from me, I've got a YouTube channel where you can watch my videos. I do at least one a week. They're all free. And by being here today, if you are actually here live, you're going to get a free copy of my book, The Mindless Investor. I will email you the link to download the book after um, the webinar. I'll also email you a video, a link to the video of today's webinar. So if things went a little too quickly, if you uh, want to watch it again, you'll be able to do that. Um, so that'll be coming. It'll take a few hours before it's ready. But I appreciate you spending your Saturday morning with me. So I want to give you a, a copy of my book and it'll get your learning started. It's kind of the basics that I want people to understand. And then uh, the course material builds on that. So that live training that I do twice a year to complement the online material starts in May. So we're going to do uh, an overview class Monday, May 3rd and Tuesday, May 4th for an hour and a half each day. And I'll walk you through all the all the theory. And then we're going to apply the investor strategies Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for an hour each night. For the active trader people that want to be day trading and swing trading, you get a free month of my active live service, which you can use anytime. So if you want to use it in July, use it in July. If you want to use it in October, it's up to you. Whenever you're ready, you get a free month. And all of these classes are recorded so you can watch them later as many times as you like. So if you know that Thursday night you can't come, no problem, you can watch the video afterward. So anyone that registers for either the investor or active trader course before Friday, April 30th at 11 p.m., will get that overview class and those um, strategy application classes included for free. So that's a little bit of a bonus that I try to do uh, twice a year. Now, if you um, if you took one of my courses in the past and you want to upgrade, you can do that. If you want to learn more about the mentorship, that's the stuff I'll talk about next Saturday. Um, we've got a limited number of spots left in the mentorship. I think eight right now out of 20. I only teach 20 the mentorship, but I will go over that as well. Now, everyone always wants to know what is the cost? This is Canadian dollars. Canadians have to pay GST on top of this. Investor course, $2,495. Active trader course, $3,495. And the mentorship is $5,495. If you took the active trader course two years ago and you want to upgrade to the mentorship, you pay $2,000. If you took the investor course and you want to upgrade to the active trader course, $1,250. Again, all Canadian. These prices haven't changed in over 10 years. I probably should change them. So anyone that wants to register can just go to stockscores.com. There's a page called Trader Training. I'll show you here. And there's lots of videos on here and more information about the courses. But of course, I'm doing some more webinars next week. And you can um, learn a lot from those. I'll talk a little bit more about my strategies, how I pick stocks, that sort of thing. So it's all, all here on this page. I just went to Trader Training. Um, Learn how to trade. If you want to register for the webinars next week, go to Trader Training, Upcoming Events. And there it all is. You can register right there on the website. 
Okay, these are all free. The mentorship is is a two thousand dollar upgrade from the Active Trader course. If you if you haven't taken the Active Trader course, you can buy the Active Trader first, log out, then log back in, and then the system will let you buy the mentorship course. Now I'm going to do stock questions in just a moment, but I first just want to launch a little poll here. Um, I don't like to bug people that don't want to be bugged. So if you want me to send you an email with a little more information about um, our courses, just answer in the affirmative. And if you don't want me to bug you, then just say no, no problem. I hope that some of you will uh, join me next week, Tuesday and Wednesday and Saturday for some of the other webinars. We'll go a little bit more in depth on how to read charts and, and my strategies and that sort of thing. Show the tools that I use. I'll show TradeStation. I'll show the market scan tool on stock scores. Today's a lot of today is really about psychology and, and sort of managing your head. Uh, we'll go into the mechanics of trading next week. Okay, I'll give this uh, little survey another 10 seconds or so, and then we'll wrap up with some questions. Okay, so I'm going to turn off this poll. Thanks everyone for answering. And I got to close this down. Okay, uh, also make sure you go to my YouTube channel, go to stock or go to YouTube, search for stock scores. You'll find the stock scores YouTube channel and subscribe to the channel. I put up at least one video every week. It's all free content. You'll, you'll learn something from that. I always talk about where the markets are headed, that sort of thing. So um, let's maybe jump into that a little bit now and think about where is the the S and P 500, where is the Toronto Stock Exchange going and looking? So we can jump in here and pull up the SPY S and P 500, and it's in a good uh, upward trend. It's a little extended. There's something called channels, and and this market here is at the top of its channel right now. And at that point, it's very likely that it'll pull back in the short term. However, there's no sign of a pullback yet. It hasn't shown any weakness yet. So I don't think it's a particularly bad thing. Pulling back within the upward trend is pretty normal, but don't be surprised if you get that. Uh, the Canadian market, T.XIU is the symbol for the TSX 60, and it's also in that upward sloping channel. You can draw a line across the tops, across the bottoms, and we're sort of oscillating in this, a little bit near the top of the range, but it's a bull market. Uh, volumes are pretty light, so that worries me a little bit but uh, I don't see any reason to sell the market in general. There's been no breakdown. This kind of analysis I do in my weekly market minutes video, which you can get on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and subscribe to the Stock Scores YouTube channel. Okay, so I'm gonna just try to, there's lots, I mean, we have a lot of people in here today, so there's no way I will get to all these questions, but I'm gonna try. So Coinbase just listed um, three days ago, uh, the name isn't right there, but Coinbase is basically a hub for trading um, uh, cryptocurrency. To me, there's not enough history here to be able to make a judgment on whether it's good or not. I need some more history. So I I personally wouldn't do anything more than day trade this right now because I just don't think it's predictable yet. Someone asked me about ORC, whether it's a good stock to buy for the long term. I don't see any reason to buy it here. It actually just broke down last week. It's in a little bit of a downward trend, so I can draw a line, whoops, I can draw a line across the tops. Oh, my line tool's not working, hold on a second, maybe it'll work now. Nope, anyway, imagine drawing a line across these tops. We kind of hit that, and that's why we're getting a little bit of selling pressure. I don't really think that looks too great. Uh, someone asking about restoration hardware, RH. Uh, good hold, not a good buy because it's just too far into its upward trend. Doing very well, obviously, but I wouldn't be a buyer of it here. If you own it, I would stick with it. Um, SNDL. SNDL has got falling tops. That's a sign of pessimism. Breaking through some support doesn't look great. Uh, what's another one here? DB. Decibel Cannabis, that's Deutsche Bank, it's probably D.DB, V.DB, you gotta let me know if it's on a Canadian listing. Okay, so here it's on the TSX Venture. Uh, looks like it's trying to turn around. 
showing a little bit of life. It's getting a little bit of volume coming in. I think it's it's pretty good, maybe a six out of 10, but I wouldn't say it's it's awesome. SPCE, ugly, falling tops, breaking down through support, getting into where it's got some long-term support, but not really a stock that I'd wanna be in right now. KOS, uh, so here you can see the upward trend line has been broken, draw a line across these bottoms. We've built a falling top, we've broken down from a falling top. So some of these skills, or what I will sort of go into next week in the webinars Tuesday and Wednesday. So I'm trying to do it as fast as I can because I wanna keep the presentation on the clock here. Uh, what else we got here? Does your stock screener software scan all markets, including crypto? It scans all US and Canadian stock markets. It does not scan crypto. However, things like GBTC is the Bitcoin Investment Trust is basically it trades like a stock. So that's how I evaluate Bitcoin. And there's some others out there. Um, and that's what I use. And, and in that case, it is getting picked up by our scanner. Um, T.SGY, Surge Energy. Uh, it's in an upward trend, a little bit, you know, ran away from the trend line. It's now pulling back to it. Could pull back a little more and take a look at the three year on it. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I, I wouldn't buy it here, but if you're in it, it, it might bounce off of that 50, 55 cent mark and resume the upward trend. It really depends on oil. So the chart for oil broke this little pullback on uh, Wednesday last week. So that's encouraging. We'll see if that can materialize into a resumption of the trend. APPH. Um, APPH, here's one that went parabolic. This is what's called a bursting bubble candle. It's one thing I teach in my courses. Made a bursting bubble candle early February. That was a hard sell then. I mean, it's a stock to avoid right now. Um, what are signs that penny stock is being artificially inflated? Assume that everything is being artificially inflated. Believe no one, trust no one, only trust market action. Stocks that go up on strong volume are going up because they're, you know, attracting buyers, but that doesn't mean that they're for real. They can just as easily go right back down again. Here's a $40 stock that went from 10 to 42 and it's back down to 16. It's all potentially artificially inflated. That's not a reason not to buy it. I love to buy stocks that are inflated artificially or not. And I, but I'm also a seller. I don't, I don't have any loyalty to any stock. T.CVE, a good upward trend. I'd stick with this, wouldn't buy it here. WPRT, uh, that has broken its upward trend line. So here you can see it went parabolic. There's your bursting bubble candle. It uh, trades big volume at the highs, closes below its open. That's a red candle. And then it broke the linear trend line from a falling top here early in March. So a few sell signals there. Um, what do the scores mean at the top of the screen? I haven't gone into that tonight or today. I, I don't really have the time. However, there is a lesson on that. If you go into the um, education center and you want to learn how the stock scores work, here is a lesson right there. There's a video called the Stock Scores Indicators right there. So give that a watch. It's maybe 10 minutes long. It'll explain it. Uh, what do I got here? Dollar General, DG. Is it a sell? Uh, it's rallying into resistance. So when markets rally into resistance, they usually get stuck at resistance. We'll see if that happens here. It's hard to say, but I, I wouldn't buy it for certain. I don't see a reason to sell it because it hasn't broken this little upward trend yet. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. I know I've missed many of your questions, but there's just so many rolling in. We had a record crowd here today, so I really appreciate that. I want to thank you for joining me. I hope that we'll see some of you next week. Just go to Trader Training Upcoming Events, and you can register for the events next week, all free. And I'll go a little bit more in depth into how to read a stock chart and, and how to pick winners, avoid losers, that sort of thing. Hope you've enjoyed it today. Um, see you uh, maybe on my YouTube channel. Check that out. And hopefully I'll see you next week as well. Look for the email to come uh, later today with the link to download my book and try to get that read as quick as possible because there's lots of great information in that as well. Thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of the day.